welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Alyeska Pipeline Service Company, sustaining Alaska's pipeline and its operations today and into the future. Find a living in fisheries. The UAS Fisheries Technology Program offers online study from anywhere in Alaska, plus labs and workshops in many Alaska towns. most likely a chum. Find your living without leaving where you are. Fisheries Technology from UAS. The National Weather Service. Good Thursday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with you on this last day of March, and it has been a hot one across southern parts of Alaska. We'll get to that in just a minute. In the meantime, you can always check your latest forecast information anytime by going to weather.gov slash Alaska or giving us a call on the weather info line at 800-472-0391. If you'd like to look at some of the forecast highs for southeast Alaska today, just to see how close things got and how warm it was in your neck of the woods, Head over to Facebook, NWS Alaska there. You can find us on Twitter anytime. Simply look for the hashtag AKWX. Found some interesting cloud photos over Anchorage today that way. And over YouTube, you can uh, find the daily afternoon map briefings by going to NWS Anchorage. And of course, uh, using uh, the search AKWX TV to find this complete broadcast at the end of the day. Again, on YouTube anytime. Here's a look at the hazardous weather now, and you'll notice it's really focused along the Yukon Valley all the way from the Delta into uh, the Alcan border there. The red areas are warnings, and there's two different types today. We have a blizzard warning in effect for the Norton Sound coast and in that region, uh, in places like uh, uh, for uh, Stebbins and Unalakleet, we're talking about uh, about uh, two to six inches of snow. The problem is the wind's going to be blowing as well, so that's going to drop visibility and make travel uh, very difficult at times with that blizzard warning. That'll continue until uh, six o'clock tomorrow. And watch for those winds to come out of the north about uh, 25 to 35, gusting up to 45 miles per hour. And that's mainly going to be for the Norton Sound region here, so including Stebbins, you know, Clayton, all the way up uh, toward Elam. Now for Amonic and Hooper Bay, and areas uh, right there across the Yukon Delta itself, uh, winter storm warnings in effect, and that'll go until uh, 6 p.m. on Friday. Four to six inches of snow is expected there. Conditions could reach uh, blizzard level there or get really close to it, but it, the, the winds may not be quite as strong. The visibility will be poor, the winds will be blowing, and it's going to be snowing uh, during this entire uh, evening and overnight period, but uh, the worst of it looks to be a little bit further up the coast from you. So winter storm warning here for the Yukon Delta and for the Norton Sound coastline, a uh, blizzard warning in effect now. The yellow areas are winter weather advisories. Those extend for the middle and upper Yukon valleys all the way from Galena and uh, northward. So uh, from about here is where the weather really starts to turn uh, south just a little bit, all the way into Bettles and up toward uh, Fort Yukon. You're looking at uh, generally about four to six, maybe seven inches of snow in those regions. The winds are going to blow a little bit as well. Probably talking about uh, five to seven inches around the uh, lower Koyukuk Valley there, so uh, areas around Galena northward probably seeing just a little bit more before you see that general four to six range. Uh, travel is going to be a little difficult with that as well, and again, we expect the snow to start to taper off as we head through the daytime tomorrow, but through the rest of tonight, just about all of these areas are expecting accumulating snow and closer to the Norton Sound coastline, probably enough wind to call it a blizzard. Now, as we look at the satellite picture, you can see that most of southeastern Alaska has enjoyed a fair weather Thursday for sure. A strong southeasterly flow brought in by low pressure just south of the Alaska Peninsula. Two waves, actually. You can see uh, two spirals there in the satellite picture today. Uh, this moisture is coming up out of the North Pacific, and with that, a pretty very uh, stout ridge of high pressure all the way up the west coast, especially over the Pacific Northwest. Now, that's helping to feed moisture northward into the Yukon Valley, where it's snowing, and again, the winds are fairly strong along the uh, Yukon Delta as well. Visibility has been fairly poor there today. 
And as we look northward, uh, the warmth really stops around the Brooks Range, though. We're not really seeing that spread north of the summits, and because of that, temperatures have been well below zero this morning. Many places were about 20 to 30 below. That's not unusual for this time of the year, but the interesting part is that some parts in southeastern Alaska, like Klawak, made it to 71 today. So a little quick math uh, would tell you that's about a 101 degree difference from the north slope all the way down to some of the warmest locations in southeast today, which is a pretty amazing spread of temperatures from morning to afternoon. This trend's going to continue. Looks like it's going to be another warm start there for tomorrow and for many in southeastern Alaska, another uh, fair weather Friday, it looks like, for uh, the, the end of the panhandle uh, for at least the end of the month and into the beginning of next month. They're probably close to record setting temperatures again for south central as well. Places like Homer were fairly mild today and uh, Anchorage was uh, kind of leaning up on the, ab uh, the record high today, I believe, which was 51. Uh, temperatures hadn't made it out of the 40s by late afternoon, but we shall see how that goes before the day is over. Now looking northward, you can see the clouds are fairly bright. What's happening underneath them? We're getting snow across the lower and middle Yukon Valley into the Norton Sound region, uh, also around the western tip of the Seward Peninsula and around Wales. Rain is falling from Kodiak Island down the Pacific coastline of the Alaska Peninsula and around Bristol Bay and westward toward uh, Cape Newenham and out toward the Pribilovs. It is snow. Low pressure sitting across the southern Yukon at 1,016 millibars, but it is a ridge of high pressure extending from the Pacific Northwest all the way up southeastern Alaska that's keeping things fairly dry. What you're seeing in the form of white here is actually snow on the mountaintops rather than clouds passing over the hills. Low pressure sitting south of the central Aleutians at 979 millibars. And if you look really carefully here, you can see on the visible satellite picture all these little rows of tiny, tiny, tiny clouds. The cloud streets they are forming off of the ice edge, which is what we're seeing right here. And that again uh, extends all the way down to about St. Matthew and Nunavak Island and northward. You can see there's some holes in that ice there, but uh, the cold air flowing off the ice interacting with the moisture over the Bering Sea, creating those cloud streets. Just another wonderful thing about the visible satellite picture. A ridge of high pressure across the north slope sitting at a very strong level, 1,000, about 40 millibars or so, and that is locking in that cold weather for right now. Tonight's forecast shows low pressure extending from the Yukon Delta all the way into the Alaska Range and Kind of sitting tight there. That's what stationary fronts like to do. On the north side of that, there's enough moisture and enough lift with this broad weather pattern to create some snow. Some of that will be accumulating, and some of that, along with stronger winds for the Norton Sound region, could create blizzard conditions for many locations, especially from the Yukon Delta northward. Again, we'll have a question mark about how strong the winds will be around the Yukon Delta region there, but remember, have a plan. If you have to go out, make sure somebody knows where you're going. Make sure you know how you're going to get there and plan accordingly. A plan like you might get lost, so make sure you've got enough supplies and do it carefully. And if you don't have to go out tonight, uh, that'd be a really good plan to just stay put and ride out the storm. Up across the upper Yukon Valley and around Fort Yukon at Winter Weather Advisory will continue there. About four to six inches of snow before the end of Friday. We'll look further south into the Aleutians and that 981 millibar low will drop just a little bit further to the south and east. That's going to keep just enough warmth there for rain and snow to mix across Adak and Atka. Now one thing we're going to watch is how these winds form up across the regions around Sand Point and west of Kodiak Island. Uh, this is a little bit in disagreement with some of our weather forecast models today. So depending on how strong that is, you might see some occasional gusts as we head through Friday across the Alaska Peninsula and in those gap prone areas. Low pressure sitting south of Nunavak Island will drift a little bit northward as we head into Friday. That's going to drag some more warmer air northward into the Yukon Valley. You'll notice that snow line doesn't change a whole lot except right along the coast. So places from Nunavak Island up toward the Yukon Delta could start to see rain instead of snow, perhaps by the very end of Friday. But for most places along the Yukon Valley, that will be snow. Uh, around St. Matthew, snow is expected there. Rain will still mix with snow across the central chain, but it is rainfall all the way from the Alaska Peninsula and Dutch Harbor and Unalaska to South Central, Cook Inlet region, uh, Kodiak Island, and then down across southeastern Alaska, at least the outer coast there. There might be a few raindrops across the inner coastline, but it really looks like the broad pattern will keep things a little more cloudy than uh, wet across southeast as we head into Friday. For Saturday, low pressure shifts just a little bit further east. That brings that colder air closer to St. Paul and St. George once again. Uh, periods of rain and snow mixed across the Yukon Delta. Northward, we're still looking at that warmer air traveling over the Seward Peninsula and into Kotzebue Sound region. That should provide ample focus for more snow across the south-facing slopes of the Brooks Range and into Norton Sound 
and all the way up the Yukon Valley into the uh, western parts of the Yukon itself. Rain will probably start to break up around the Cook Inlet region. It will, there will still be some rain around in the Susitna Valley region. And again, that's rain around Talkeetna in Susitna Valley. So certainly some warm air there. Prince William Sound, of course, parts of the Kenai Peninsula. And it looks like southeast is back in the wet weather with another wave of low pressure lining up to move north and west as we head into the rest of the week. And that's at 999 millibars now. So not a big system, but enough to keep that warm and wet air moving toward the north and west and moving toward the Gulf Coast region as we head through uh, Sunday and into Monday. Here's a look at those temperatures now. Remember I said Klawak hit 71 degrees. This was uh, just a few minutes after I made this map there. So this was the 70 degree we reading we saw. Down around Ketchikan and Annette, it was about 63 degrees. Most other stations in southeast were at least in the lower to mid 50s, some places even warmer than that. But you can see that warmth is uh, certainly present there. In fact, some question marks about a few of the stations around Klawak. Uh, we'll have to check and see if those are really real because sometimes little things can affect the uh, actual weather monitoring there. Uh, but some stations were reporting temperatures in the upper 70s, maybe even lower 80s across some of the interior areas of southeast. So it was a warm spot, no question about it. Around Prince William Sound, unfortunately, Valdez not reporting today, but uh, 40s and 50s were seen around the Kenai Peninsula. Cordova was up to 66. Middleton Island out in the middle of the water at 48. Kodiak Island in the mid 40s there, a little cooler for you with rain. And 46 around Fairbanks, a very mild day there with lower 50s around Healy and Fort Greeley. 57 in Eagle today, that's surely breaking up the ice, says Ann. Thanks for the pictures there. 16 in Fort Yukon, as well as Arctic Village. Now look at the north slope. The warmth is not making it there. Uh, temperatures again this morning around Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse, down around minus 30. Minus 9 for Point Barrow, uh, Wainwright at minus 8 this afternoon. Single digits and low teens for Kotzebue Sound, Kivalina, and two below around Wales and Tin City. 20 above for Nome, so at least a little bit of warmth making it there. Teens for the lower and middle Yukon Valley, all the way down from uh, well, Galena at 15 degrees to Amonic at 14. Nunavak Island at 19 and 33 in Bethel. Uh, it was 35 in McGrath today. For Southwest, 40s and 50s, Dillingham up to 50 degrees there and uh, 40s for most of the Alaska Peninsula. Sand Point at 45, 29 for St. Paul, 31 in St. George. And the Aleutians saw temperatures in the lower to mid 30s with the exception of Atka at uh, 39 degrees today, 45 in Dutch Harbor. Now overnight lows will stay in, above freezing for most areas in south central, southwest, and uh, closer to 40 degrees in fact. Southeast, lower to mid 30s. Uh, the interior, the middle Tanana Valley around 21, three above in Fort Yukon, and anywhere from 25 to 30 below across the Arctic coast with 12 above in Nome. A high temperature tomorrow in the lower 20s, 12 below for Barrow. That's high temperatures now, 42 in uh, Fairbanks. South Central looking at temperatures at around 50 degrees or so, 45 for Kodiak. Southeast looking at highs back in the lower to mid 50s for most areas. There'll probably want be one or two spots that uh, go well above that. 33 around St. Paul and closer to 40 for Adak and Atka. Nome again back in the lower 20s tomorrow and closer to 50 for southwest. On to flying weather now. IFR conditions should be expected across the Seward Peninsula and around north and south throughout the daytime tomorrow all along the southwest coast and for most of the Alaska Peninsula and into Cook Inlet as well as the Resurrection Bay region and parts of the western gulf. Hit and miss IFR across some of the lower terrain and uh, certainly the inner channels there but as you get up a little bit higher you'll probably find that most of that is clearing out there so MVFR conditions around some of the islands and then Again, uh, hit and miss uh, VFR. Look for the central Aleutians to start out around IFR. A lot of that's going to shift eastward during the day and still focus around the north and western side of that low pressure system with improving conditions perhaps around the Yukon Delta and parts of Norton Sound. Watch for IFR to develop across the north and western parts of Prince William Sound as well as the Wrangell St. Elias region and VFR conditions uh, probably waning away, uh, expecting MVFR for most of southeast by the afternoon. Here's your pass conditions. Expect MVFR for Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass as we go into your Friday. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass, MVFR conditions should be expected there. Rainy Pass, we also expect marginal levels of visibility as we get into the afternoon. Windy Pass, MVFR by day's end. Isabel Pass, also looking for MVFR to develop there. So uh, watch that. For Mentasta, though, it looks like A-OK. -okay. VFR conditions there. And for Tanita Pass, VFR conditions through most of your Friday. IFR, as you would expect in this weather pattern for Portage Pass. Again, that's mainly going to be on the eastern side. So if you're going up and down Cook Inlet, probably mostly OK. And Chilkoot and White Pass, look for MVFR conditions there to develop for Friday. In the meantime, as you'll see on the satellite picture, that warm and wet air continues to move northward, and so it's not a real big surprise to see freezing levels at or above 10,000 feet 
for parts of southeast, but it's a really sharp boundary there right across the Yukon Valley, and this is why we're seeing that snow sitting up right all along this boundary right here. A very good setup for snow and wind, in fact, for the YK Delta. The surface freezing line just south of that along the Alaska Range and north of southeast, and uh, running right along the Pribilovs and out toward Kiska and Attu uh, for tomorrow morning's freezing levels. Icing potential will be found above 5,000 feet for areas north of Haines and Skagway up toward Yakutat. Some of that could reach occasional moderate. Along the Brooks Range, out across the Seward Peninsula and around the south and western coast into Bristol Bay, above two to about 4,000 feet. That occasional moderate is possible all the way out toward the central chain. Again, you'll notice that follows that frontal boundary very, very closely, not only at the surface, but at the higher levels too. So uh, again, watch for icing potential there. Tomorrow's jet stream shows low pressure, still firmly in control of the North Pacific with stronger winds coming up right over the Gulf, that warm and wet air blowing northward and feeding right over that boundary that we just saw with the freezing levels there. Again, a very good setup for a lot of lift and a lot of moisture to uh, create a pretty good snow machine for the Yukon Valley going forward. At 9,000 feet, our southerlies are intact at 25 to as high as 40 knots across the open waters of the Gulf, a south and uh, maybe a little bit more of a southwesterly shift across southeastern Alaska. Strong easterly winds preventing that uh, warmer air from moving northward across the North Slope. Those winds moving from east to west across the Beaufort Sea Coast and the Chukchi, 20 to 25, and north and easterly winds blowing out of the Bering Strait at about 20 to 35 miles per hour at 3,000 feet. Very little change here, a little bit of a stronger flow across the Yukon Delta and the Norton Sound region up to 40 knots. Stronger winds across the central and western Brooks Range as well with winds there up to 40 to 50 knots from east to west. Northerlies across the chain in the west and we're getting those southerlies all the way from Dutch Harbor and Alaska into Bristol Bay and winds are fairly light across the Gulf and into southeast around 15 knots there and also across the interior. Uh, for most areas north of the Alaska Range until you get back into that stronger 40 to 50 knot flow uh, north and west of the low pressure system. Now for turbulence, uh, we will be watching for areas of severe turbulence as we head into tomorrow, but right now really focused on occasional to maybe some widespread moderate below 4,000 feet across the western Brooks Range, the Seward Peninsula, and parts of the Yukon and uh, Kuskokoon Valleys, below 4,000 feet for south central in the Alaska Range, and a little bit of chop out across the western Aleutians. Nothing expected right now for southeast. That's a look at your aviation forecast. I'll be back with the rest of your marine weather here in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. The 13th Constellation. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm Dean Regas, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Pla Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. Hey Dean, what are your thoughts about the number 13? Well, it's the square root of 169, mm -hmm. and if you add up all the eight major planets and five dwarf planets in our solar system, you'd end up with 13. And oh, this is our 13th episode of the year. Very good. And I have one more piece of Triskaidecka trivia for you. Did you know that the sun actually passes through 13 constellations? Ah, uh, yes. There's one constellation in the zodiac that's not officially part of the group. And I like this constellation because it has a weird name. The 13th constellation we're referring to is Ophiuchus. And we have a really nice planet moon Scucci in this constellation near the end of April. So, what are we talking about? Let's show you. There are currently 88 officially recognized constellations in modern astronomy. Twelve of these constellations have particular significance because during the course of the year, the sun, moon, and planets appear to drift against these background stars. Constellations along this path are referred to as the zodiac. Zodiac loosely translated means circle of animals, and the constellations of the zodiac in order are as follows. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpius, Sagittarius, Capricornus, Aquarius, and Pisces. Between Scorpius and Sagittarius, however, there's a 13th constellation that the Sun passes through on its journey. In reality, the Earth is the one doing the traveling. The Sun just appears to move through this constellation as we orbit. This constellation is Ophiuchus, and he's often represented as a man holding a snake. The nearby constellations, Serpens Cauda and Serpens Caput. His name is derived from the Greek for serpent bearer, and on ancient star maps, this constellation was named Serpentarius. 
According to legend, Ophiuchus was the son of Apollo and was taught the art of medicine by the centaur Chiron. Ophiuchus was said to have killed a snake, and no sooner had he done this, a second snake came along with a medicinal herb in its mouth. The live snake gave the dead snake the herb, restoring the dead snake to life. After seeing this, Ophiuchus snatched a little of the herb from the snake and from that point was able to restore life to the dead. Pluto, the god of the netherworld, didn't like the fact that Ophiuchus had this ability and he complained to Jupiter. Jupiter sent his pet eagle Aquila after Ophiuchus with a lightning bolt. The lightning bolt struck Ophiuchus, killing him. Jupiter, not wanting Ophiuchus' knowledge to fade into oblivion, placed the medically gifted serpent bearer among the stars. Before being brought into the heavens, Ophiuchus became good friends with Orion the hunter. Years later, Orion, boasting about what a great hunter he was, decided to prove his ability by killing all the creatures of the earth. Gaia, the goddess of the earth, sent Scorpius the scorpion to stop him. The resulting sting from the scorpion killed Orion. Ophiuchus, seeing what happened and having the power to restore life, revived Orion and asked Jupiter to place Orion on the opposite side of the sky away from the scorpion. Ophiuchus promised to keep watch over the scorpion so it wouldn't try to escape, and to this day, the star marking the foot of Ophiuchus can be seen just above Scorpius. This star is along the path the sun travels during the month of December, thus making him, albeit unofficially, one of the constellations of the zodiac. So, let's check out what's happening later this month in Ophiuchus. Okay, we have our sky set up for Sunday, April 24th, shortly before midnight. If you look to the southeast, you'll see the waning gibbous moon forming a triangle with Mars and Saturn. The bright star Antares, the heart of Scorpius the Scorpion, will be near Mars. The ringed planet Saturn is also getting a little larger each day, so make sure you check it out in a telescope this month. That's two planets and our nearest neighbor in space, paying a visit to the 13th constellation of the Zodiac. And it's all there for you to see if you keep, keep looking, looking up. up. Here's your marine forecast. Now remember the overall flow across most of Alaska is from the south and southeast. So that's what we see across the panhandle for Friday. Winds will be fairly light on the inside, about 15 to 20, with seas ranging from about 3 to 4 feet, the highest up around the Lynn Canal. And across the outer coast, 15 to 20 there. Seas a little bit more around 8 feet for most areas. Now for Saturday, you're going to see a little bit of a shift. A west and northwest flow starts to take over the outer coast. Of course, that's going to push the moisture a little bit further inland. Look for southwesterlies across Stevens Pass and northward up toward the Lynn Canal. More of a southerly flow at 20 knots. Southeasterlies inside of Clarence Strait with a three foot sea. Seas along the outer coast ranging around five to six feet for your Saturday. For South Central, look for southeasterlies continuing there from Cook Inlet all the way down to Shillikoff Strait. A stronger southeasterly flow should be expected across the Barren Islands and easterlies inside of Prince William Sound will hold around 20 knots with a four foot sea. Nine to as high as 18 foot seas there across the north and western Gulf Coast. Again, that's for Friday. For Saturday, winds will continue out of the south and southeast. Inside of Prince William Sound, light winds, 10 knots, 2 foot seas, and southeasterlies moving across the Barrens should also diminish about 15 to 20 knots there. Easterlies blowing over Kodiak Island, 15 to 20, with 5 to as high as 20 foot seas, generally on the outer coast of the uh, uh, Gulf for the north and western regions there. Inside of Shalikov Strait, a light easterly flow at 15 with a 5 foot sea. For the Alaska Peninsula, north or southeasterlies inside of Bristol Bay, look for southwesterlies on the southern coast with 14 to 17 foot seas, slightly strong Stronger winds there from Castle Cape to Chignik across the Bering Sea coast. Winds uh, still holding around 20 to 30 knots. For Saturday, winds will diminish a little bit on the north side, 15 to 20, with 4 to 5 foot seas there for the Pacific coast. Winds will stay up from Castle Cape to Chignik and hold around 20 knots from King Cove to Sand Point. Around 8 foot seas are expected on Saturday. For the, Alas uh, for the Aleutians, uh, northerlies from Adak to Atka and westward with 16 to 17 foot seas there on a 30 knot wind from the north. Look for southerlies in the east, 20 to 25, with 10 to 11 foot seas there from Atka east toward Unalaska and Nikolsky on the Pacific coast side. As we get into Saturday, look for a little bit of a, a change there from Nikolsky to Atka. Light and variable flow with 7 to 8 foot seas. Easterlies develop uh, from Nikolsky to Unalaska, 15 to 20 there, 8 foot seas on the Pacific coast side. And north and easterly winds from Atka westward, 
with winds as high as 35 knots around Kiska to Attu with a 10-foot sea on Saturday. Across the west coast, the winds will be strongest around St. Lawrence Island to St. Matthew, around 40 knots there. Again, all of this on the north side of that low-pressure system that's keeping the potential for blizzards around the Norton Sound coast down to the Yukon Delta where you're under a winter storm warning tonight. Easterlies off of the Kuskokwim Bay, 25 knots with a 6-foot sea, and northerlies around the Pribilovs with a 20-knot wind and 7-foot seas there. By Saturday, winds diminish and becomes a little more variable with time on Saturday afternoon. Southerlies north of Nunavak Island and look for northerlies to oppose that, 25 to 30 knots across St. Lawrence and St. Matthew Islands for Saturday. Now across the Arctic coast, an easterly wind becomes a little bit stronger from the north and east as you move out toward Prudhoe Bay, Barrow, and all the way around to Point Lay. Northeasterlies pick up to 40 knots around Cape Lisburn and Point Hope for Friday. They'll hold at that point for Saturday around the Chukchi Sea Coast. Winds could be as strong as 20 to 40 knots, all from the north and east, and 25 knots there around the Beaufort Sea Coast, with winds blowing from the east and northeast for Saturday afternoon. Now, recapping tonight's weather, low pressure is still in command across the Alaska Peninsula, and with a boundary sitting right around the Alaska Range and north and west, we've got enough cold air and wet air and enough lift to produce some decent amounts of snow, generally about four to six, maybe seven inches of snow from the Yukon Delta all the way up into the central uh, parts of the state and the Alcan border. So uh, generally speaking, from Fort Yukon to Galena, all the way out toward Amonic, there's a potential for snow and maybe blowing snow, enough so that there is a blizzard warning in effect for the Norton Sound region, a winter storm warning for the Yukon Delta region, and then we're expecting winter weather advisories there for about four to six inches of snow uh, up toward Fort Yukon and uh, areas north of Fairbanks. So as we go through the rest of the charts here, you'll notice that most of the southeast region will be fairly dry until Friday afternoon, a chance for some showers there and increasing clouds. Otherwise, wet weather for south central and southwestern Alaska with snow well to the north. Periods of rain may mix with snow across the Aleutians and move into south and western Alaska by Saturday. The snow will continue as we head into the weekend. Thanks for watching. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.